We've begun a lot of dang videos on this view, but how can you blame me? It is a really nice view. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we went around the Fallen Arm and Frontier Village doing some side questing in both and gained some really, really good rewards. New skill trees for both Sharla and Fiora. Two for one, it's a new record. This time, we're going to be doing another chain of important side quests here in Frontier Village, and, um, yeah. Just wanted to let you know ahead of time, this is going to be a side questing video. I always like to let you know that at the beginning of these, and before we get started, I want to show off the skill tree specifically, because, uh, Dunben's got four of them, Melia's got four, as does Charla, Ry whoa, Ryan is almost maxed out all of his, he's ahead of the game, as does Shulk, as does Fiora, but the one without a fourth skill tree is Ricky. Uh, I hope the Hero Pond will have mercy on my soul, because it's not that the route that I planned out was not accommodating to the main character of this story, it was rather that I just simply wanted to save the best for last. I hope he understands this and has mercy on me for such. I hope he does not misinterpret me. And, uh, Kafuka right here has the first quest in a chain that will get us an oh-so-mysterious reward that I have no idea what it could be and neither do you, clearly. Let's talk to him. So hungry, so very, very hungry. Hmm? Uh, he does not seem troubled, he just merely seems hungry. Kafuka wants mushy mushrooms. Couldn't you just eat one of those giant mushrooms? Or, you know, the one on your head? Too big and tough, impossible for Kafuka to eat. You see, he has standards. He can only eat the mushiest of mushrooms. Um, Dunben does not seem to want to try any of them, though. If Kafuka was younger, he could eat all mushrooms in village. Lately, he could only eat soft ones. Kafuka wishes he could find enough soft ones to fill my tummy. We have mushy mushrooms. We gotta find eight kelp mushrooms. Eight of those dang things. I know I shouldn't really freak out so much though because, you know, there's trays, there are item orbs, there's all that good stuff, but still, you need to find eight of these dang things. However, I will say that as much as I'm freaking out, it's not really a problem for me. I had 13 of these things just from playing the game normally. It kind of mirrors what I was saying back in Colony 9, how just playing the game normally, you will be able to complete quests effortlessly. And that is what has happened here. It is still true. 71 parts in. Hard to believe it has been that much time. It was nothing, you say. Yeah, it really was. Only a man of your skill could truly say that. You mean only Dunban could be that honest about saying that it really was nothing. <laughs> but with weak teeth, Kafuko cannot eat other yummy things. Oh dear, our life of soft foods for Kafuko. So we found out exactly why he could only have the mushiest of mushrooms, and it's because his teeth seem to hurt a lot. And uh, this kind of puts us on a bit of a side quest. Uh, I doubt any of you actually like going to the dentist, though, but that is kind of what we're going to be doing here today. Got to find some kind of solution. There are some doctors here in Frontier Village, and I would like to go talk to one specifically. Down here in the underground store, we switch to 10 a.m., not saving. Also, yes, I guess you could say he ate those mushrooms. We shall find Yusa. Hup, hup, ow, ouch. My knees? No, my knees are fine. The cold stings a bit, that's all. After we've registered him in the affinity chart, we want to go up to the Kind Shopping Street on the second floor. Up at the Kind Shopping Street during daytime, look at the weapon shop. See anything unusual? That is a rifle. Just sitting out there for anyone to grab. Not under any glass, doesn't have any tip on it, no. It is just a real gun that is sitting out there. They're kind of asking for trouble when they just leave a gun out like that. Just saying. Uh, but I'm just going to ignore that be a good person and talk to Medi right here. There is one area of medicine in which I do not excel. Do you know what it is? Please tell me more. Uh, Fiora seems fascinated at him being inept as a doctor. Then again, no doctor is really good at everything. It is dental treatment. And it seems that my rival Yusa is also doing studies in that field. I want to be first to perfect my dental treatment methods. Arg. What's up? Don't tell me you have a toothache. I was getting some work done on my teeth when I... Well, I ended up with this body. Hold up. Hold on. My toothache is gone. I can see you're not quite a hom-hom. Do you mind if I examine you? No need, no need. There is nothing wrong with me. We got medical advancements. We need to get two Ori's horn from the Ori's on Valak Mountain. That takes us a little bit out of our way, and he wants to make dental equipment with these things. Does that mean that you're going to make a dental drill out of horns? Uh, from Out of animal horns? Ouch. No trades for this item are currently available to us, so I will just simply mention that to get this item, you need to go to the Nuffle Tower and head northwest. As you can see on the map, just barely northwest of there is the Zephyr Ori's. This drops what you want. Let's get into it. 
got exactly what you asked for for your dental drill of pain. We got the horns. I could not imagine that. That'd be like elephant ivory being used to make a dental drill. That just sounds downright painful. Then again, typically anything dealing with a dentist drill is, to be fair. I, I, I guess it isn't as painful as it used to be, to be fair. I'm just talking too much about the dental drill. He's going to show you who's boss. He's going to test it on someone with bad teeth. Well, we know just the person. And actually, I haven't mentioned this. That quest right there was timed. Technically, this is not part of the quest chain beyond a certain point. It's that you can choose to help either Medi or Yusa. It's just that I personally chose to help Medi. Yusa does have a quest chain of their own, and I will be showing that at the end of this video. Now, uh, speaking of people with bad teeth, we got Kofuko right here, and they have a quest for us. Let's see what you got while your head is being blocked by Ryan. Oh, at least when he's checking his shoulder, you uh, can see your face. Oh, well. So his teeth has already been fixed. I knew stuff happened fast in this world, but dang, I wish having your tooth drilled to the dentist happened in only like a few seconds like that. Uh, everything Kafuko eats tastes mild, but Kafuko likes strong flavors. Even the strongest tasting food in Village is too mild for Kafuko. What's the strongest tasting food here, then? Bitter, bitter, bitter red citrus. Kafuko eats tons of them. Yuck, ugh, that much red citrus. Why was Ugg capitalized there out of curiosity? That doesn't look right. So Kafuko wants to eat a dish that uses the strongest ever flavors. We have world's strongest flavor. This is multiple objectives. So now the merchants told me rumor of sour bitter red stew. It made from these ingredients. This should be good. A dash of crimson citrus with some ruby mangosteen and, sounds good so far, splash of bloody brog sweat with frozen Aries meat. Bloody Brog Sweat. You're going to drink this. He said it was a red stew. So it gets its red color from bloody sweat from a Brog. Well, we got the Crimson Citrus. Got the Frozen Aries meat. In fact, the enemies we were just fighting for the last quest could drop these. And I have not anything else. Uh, okay. It's not my place to tell you what you can and can't eat, and I know that I've been emphasizing on it a lot already, but you are about to eat bloody brog sweat. You're not even, like, cooking it out of meat or anything like that. You are just flat out putting it in a stew, mixing it in, and... These flavors are crazy strong. Absolutely delicious. Well, you know, it could be the most delicious thing in the world. I can't say. We don't have brogs in my universe. We have frogs, which are dang close, but... Their faces are not nearly as horrific, and they are not nearly as big, unfortunately. So, he thinks the Hereupon and friends. Hereupon takes the uh, takes the uh, credit, even though he wasn't even at the party for this. And we get some equipment. Probably outdated. Next quest in the line is in the daytime in the underground store. Once we head down here, if she'll spawn in, we have Inpa. Sounds a lot like Inpa, but in the house. I don't know. I like her little eyelashes, those are really cute. Anyway, so there's two doctors in the village, Dr. Medi and Yusa. We have a slight problem, though. That is a worry. Yes, problems are indeed worries. So Ricky is going to dance around. Ricky, what are you thinking about? This is important, you know? Well, Ricky's dances are important, too. So these two doctors are at war with each other. If they are both good doctors, then they should be able to cooperate. Dr. Medi and Dr. Yusa are both as inflexible as either crystals. Well, Rix has got flexibility for one of his skill trees, you know? Maybe he could learn teach them a thing or two. So, even at the request of Chief Dunga, the two of them will not work together, and Dr. Yusa's legs have been hurting him for many years. I think he finds it more and more difficult to walk these days. I want to get Dr. Medi to do something for Dr. Yusa. Healing the healer! We need to talk to Medi and convince him to help out his rival bring the two of them together. And, uh, I'm not, like, any sort of expert on pollen orbs, but I don't think you should be getting those wet. Just a hunch. Hello there, Medi. By the way, it is so adorable how the doctor is named Medi. And I do not look beaten up. I'm complimenting your name. Uh, we do not need any checkups. We want you to cure Yusa's leg. So he's in agony with his leg. Hmm. No wonder he hasn't been up annoying me recently. Wow! You guys really don't like each other, but there's no point in hitting a man while he's done, even though you did hit him pretty hard with your words there. So it would hurt his pride to know that I cured him. So let's try one of those old Nopon charms first. There is an ancient Nopon legend which I think you need to know. We offer flowers to the Bionis at the same area of Bionis that hurts. The location on the Bionis must match the location of the injury. Yusa has pain in his knee, which is in turn on his leg, right? So the offering must be made on the Bionis leg. Now go ask Yusa about his knees. That should give you a chance to mention the flowers to him. Let's see what he has to say. By the way, the glasses really differentiate them. They look very doctor-like and sophisticated. 
We're healthy, but we want to know about your legs. My thighs and knees are in terrible pain. How about using flowers? What? Flowers? Oh! An offering of flowers at the altars on Bionis' leg. You have good knowledge of holding up on traditions. It will prepare... I will prepare the flowers offering. Make a, Making the offering is impossible for me, though. Can I ask friends to do it? Sure, we'll just walk on over to the Bionis' leg just for you. We are such good friends. We have Legendary Nopon Charm, and we have four sacred flowers that need to be offered at four separate places. This is going to sound very strange that I like this quest in particular, but it is actually one of my favorites. I'm always a fan of side quests whenever they mention, like, customs of a fantasy race, or whenever there's any kind of world building where they mention, like, some kind of old tradition or some, you know, something of that sort. It makes the world more alive, more believable, makes it feel like it's more of a living, breathing place when you tell of old legends that they believe in and things like that. And I honestly, offering, like making a peace offering at the body part of Bionis where you are hurting, I feel like that is something that would happen if we lived on the bodies of Titans and not on planets in our universe. It, is, it sounds like something that people of ancient times would indeed believe in. Anyway. We need to go to four different locations on Bionis, and another reason why I like the side quest so much is the fact that this was actually foreshadowed a long, long time ago. Back when we visited Bionis Leg for the first time, uh, in fact, we actually, um, we're coming up to it right now, but the map is an indication, we saw these very places where we need to make these offerings. Uh, by the way, um, before I get too into it, just be warned, there are some very high-level monsters about in some of the places you're going to be going to. Case in point, level 77 vision type monster. Be sure to steer clear. So, these altars. I mentioned they looked a lot like something a Nopong would build. They even resemble the biters that they use a little bit. Yeah, these um, various altars that we saw, you know, made of wood, these are where we need to make these offerings to. So, if you can just remember where these were on our first visit, you should know instantly where to go. But, of course, I will be showing them nonetheless. Second one is that Kasharpa Falls on the upper level of the Bionis Leg. Also, any side quest that lets me just stare at the grace and beauty of Bionis Leg for miles and miles, it's a good side quest in my book, and it is always welcome in my quest log. Third one is up on Villiera Hill. And the final location will be found by going to Gaur Plain and going about as far south as you can possibly go. Seriously, we are right on the edge of the Bionis right now. That completes the legendary Nopon Charm, and we can now head back to Frontier Village, but... Speaking of Gower Plain, now that we have actually gone to that place again, I have a bone to pick with Super Smash Bros. 3DS and Wii U. And yes, it is something that would only bother me and no one else. What is it? Well, the stage that you play on there is called Gower Plain. It's very pretty, I'm sure you remember it if you've played the game at all. Um, well, Gower Plain is not the name of that region. That region is called Bionis Leg. Gaur Plain is just one landmark in Bionis Leg, and Gaur Plain is very close to the knee of the Bionis, as in it's pretty close to the Mechonis. The stage is not close to the knee. You can see a lot of the leg in front of you before the Mechonis. That means that you are close to the torso of the Bionis on that stage. It's pretty much about as far away from the Gaur Plain landmark as you can possibly get. And it bothers me that it's not just called Bionis Leg. I know, it bothers me and only me, and I'm stupid, but still. I did want to bring it up. Yes, we are back, you side. Remembered exactly what we need to do. Your knee pain is actually cleared up. Hang on there. Did someone put you up to this? So it was Medi and Inpa. Uh, now I owe them a debt. I suppose I am grateful to them. Of course, I am grateful to friends, too. And after he's done, we can talk to Inpo once again, who still has not learned to keep her pollen orbs out of the water. This seems to have made them forget their differences for now. I can relax when I go to see Dr. Yusa. Oh, what a relief. Another problem solved. Indeed. Right on. Well worth the effort. Dr. Yusa has not been cured of his stubbornness, though. Why is there no period after doctor in any of these text boxes? Is that like a European thing again? I don't know. Pretty much any time that I ever say the English is incorrect, I'm always told that it's a European thing. We get a bleed plus three gem. I know that that's making our enemies bleed, but... Oh, selfless giver for an achievement! At 50,000 experience! Wow! Worthwhile achievement is worthwhile. Wow, whatever I did for that, I'm glad I did it. I don't even know. But, um... Anyway, um, even though we're making our enemies bleed from that gem, 
That's not exactly something you'd expect to get for helping a doctor, considering they want less pain and injury in the world, which is why they uptook their profession. I guess if it was indeed Dr. Yusa that gave that to us, he'd be taking the hypocritical oath. <laughs> well, after doing that, Medi has a new quest for us. <laughs> dear, oh dear, I don't get it. I just don't get it. You sound like Winnie the Pooh. Recently, I get nothing but complaints from my patients. Whatever am I doing wrong? A vision! Me get funny pattern where me rub medicine on fur. Give me back my pretty fur. It medicine's fault. Me drink medicine and me not feel right anymore. You quack, doctor. You try to wipe out Napon. Oh no! What's wrong? There is a problem with my medicine, you say. I get it from Puko. He gets it from custom, custom made from Hyantia. It has been approved for use by Napon. You don't think Mechon raids have affected its quality, do you? If I ask him directly, then it could affect our trusting relationship. Can you ask him for me? Just act casually if you do. I can't let him think I distrust him. We've got mislabeling problem. We need to go talk to Puko and squeeze information out of him to ask why the medicine has been of lower quality lately. So Puko is right around here. And around the corner of this weapon shop, check it out. It is two more rifles just sitting out in the open. And I thought America had bad gun control laws. <laughs> okay, no, not serious. I don't mean to joke about things like that, though, but still. Just three guns just out in the open like that. Unprotected, not in a glass case. Nothing. Either way, Puko is right around said corner. Let's talk to him. You want to know about medicine, Puko sold to Dr. Medi. We actually lose affinity with Frontier Village for this. It'll get gained back soon enough, don't worry. Puko c cannot answer that. Puko signed non-disclosure agreement. Another vision! Oh, no, 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 it not my fault. Monster attack supplies again. Puko cannot tell lies any longer. Puko is finished in this village. Monster? <laughs> How did you know about the monster? If you know about the monster, that must mean you come to help Puko. Puko asked Napon merchants to get bird people medicine. But merchants bring me bringing medicine were attacked by monster. Goods were scattered. But Medi had already paid, so Puko have to give him something. So Puko tried to concoct his own medicine. Puko did not realize it would have such bad effect on people. Merchants were attacked by Abominable Hill in the Varith Sea. How can I get medicine back? Please go badge Abominable Hill for me. Indeed we shall! We need to head off to Aerith Sea and take out a hill, and you know what the hills look like? Those things that have testicles on their face. Um, the Abominable Hill is found at Showdown Cliff, which you need to go from the Latiel Shore to Hovering Reef 1, and then there. Here at the Showdown Cliff from the Teleporter. Uh, you know, you can see how this is like really off the beaten path, just way off to the side. Why would the merchants have stopped here on their way back from Alchemoth, especially when it has a name like Showdown Cliff? It's like they were asking to get attacked. But while we are up here and looking for the Abominable Helm that we need to hunt, I want to bring up something that a lot of people seem to have taken up issue with in the comments, and I didn't really think it was that important to acknowledge, but just because so many people have been asking me about it, I think I really should. It is that we got visions during that side quest. I've been getting a lot of people being like, wait, you're playing as Ryan. You know, how are you getting visions? Ryan doesn't have the Monado. And like right there, I was playing as Fiora and Shulk wasn't even in the party, yet we were getting a vision anyway. Uh, can that abominable hell please come down here? But in all seriousness, um, people have been asking that a lot. And I kind of get like where people are coming from though, but I thought it was just kind of clear that Shulk is in the greater party, as in, even though we're not currently playing with him in the group during fights, and he's like not like appearing, he is traveling around with us. He can get visions and tell the others about what he has seen. And as such, that is kind of what's going on here. It's the, even though Shulk is invisible to us, he is still in the party, and that is how we are able to get visions even without him there. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that they do this though, because if you needed to be playing as Shulk or just have Shulk in your group at three to be able to get visions at all when it's such a central part of, you know, big battles, I think it would kind of make Shulk too important of a character and you would never not play with him. So I'm kind of glad with that. And can I, oh wait, I can get that. Okay, cool. I can actually go up on top of the flower. See, I could see that flower and I could actually go there. Impressive, isn't it? Okay, maybe not really, but this view is impressive, damn it. 
Hiya, Puko. Only uh, a one-letter transposition away from being Koopo. You guys really are like the Moogles of this universe. Hey, Puko. So we'll give the medicine to Dr. Medi, which is what I would have done with common sense if the quest log wasn't telling me to go back to you. He was saying be sure not to tell him about what actually happened because it's our little secret. Uh, let's see just how long we keep that from. Considering that we told Yusa about who wanted to help him before, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to last long. And where is Medi? Is he only out at nighttime? Seems so! Here we are! You brought me the medicine I ordered from Puko! Hmm, it seems different to the medicine he gave me recently. Maybe it's a new formula or something. Anyway, thanks for looking into it for me. Oh, what a relief. Another problem solved, yet again. Well worth the effort. Ryan says the same thing too. I must go thank Puko for his continued efforts. I'll be ordering from him again. See you, s you soon, you see. We got some. We got two more little stars of affinity with Central Bionis, so the affinity that we lost from starting this has already been gained back. Awesome. So Medi does not have another quest for us after that. You know what that means? We gotta go down. Nope. We gotta go up. Yeah, we are not going down to the lower level. Instead, we are going all the way up to the seventh floor at the Prophecy Head, even though all the side quests have taken us either to Kind Shopping Street or to the Underground Store up to this point. That is because the next side quest isn't really all that related to what we've done. Don't get me wrong, everything we've done has been a prerequisite to this, but it is still kind of strange how it's not really all that related. We have Dobby Dobby staring off into space at his existential quandary. Let's talk to him. Oh, I hate high places, but I must show courage and make the jump. Dobby Dobby? Dobby Dobby okay? Not okay, not okay at all. But still, I have to jump, otherwise I can never get married. Dobby Dobby, nothing to worry about. Ricky just as afraid as Dobby Dobby. Ricky goes shaky knees when think about jumping from here. Jumping business is very strange. Ricky, how philosophical of you to word it like that. It's not, j so it's not just Dobby Dobby. I knew other Nopon think the same. But if I do not jump, Dadapon will disown me. Sticky situation indeed. When Ricky jump, Ricky make Oka jump along with Ricky. But it's also important to know when to give up. Nopon must not throw life away by getting squished at bottom. Cowardly Ricky, speak the truth. Ricky, not coward, meh! Then I will call it quits. It's too dangerous. I will only end up causing more pain for myself and others. Go tell Aditi that Dobby Dobby is a worthless knop on. I pity her having to marry useless Dobby Dobby. That is best thing to do. Ricky! Oh, uh, what a horrible thing to say! I don't like questioning Ricky that often, considering how he gets in people question him, but still... Dobby Dobby, look at yourself. A teeny weeny nap on like you could never jump properly. Silly Billy Dobby Dobby. He's gonna get hurt if he does it. Did Shulk just see vision? You can see what I was saying earlier, how Shulk gets to see them and he just tells the other party about them. So Dobby Dobby going to jump, but he say he not want to. Very foolish, Dobby Dobby. Quick, Ricky must talk to Aditi before he do something silly. We have getting bigger. Whoa, we too high. If I so small I jump and get caught by gust of wind, I get blown into forest. But I must show Aditi bravery so we can be together. We need to talk to Aditi, the fiancé pawn of Dobby Dobby. Not quite the wifey pawn. In order to find her, we just gotta jump off the high diving board that he is afraid to jump off of. And seems like Ricky is indeed able to make it, as scared as he was to jump from it. Aditi is right here waiting for her fiancé pawn, so let's talk to her. Friends went to see Dobby Dobby. Something wrong. Can I help? Another vision. Dobby Dobby. I worked hard to get a kid no jaw gristle. I worked so hard my fur all in tatters. But I too late. Dobby Dobby. Gone forever. I will jump too. Jump to Dobby Dobby. Dobby Dobby. I will be with you soon. A kid no jaw gristle? I need to gather some Echidna Jaw Crystal. If I do, Puko will sell me some enlarging seaweed. With the seaweed, Dobby Dobby can jump off diving boards safely. But it's impossible for me to gather Echidna Jaw Crystal by myself. Well, we already have all of them from fighting Echidnos in air at sea, so we are all good here. If we can just get this over to Puko in time, Dobby Dobby will not have to die today. Unfortunately for him, though, Puko only comes out in the daytime, so we're just going to have to wait around for 13 hours hoping that he doesn't jump in the meantime. Hiya, Koopa Puko. I smell a kidno jaw gristle. How did friends manage to find it? I sell enlarging seaweed here. If you eat it along with a kidno jaw gristle, you'll get really large. Mmm, on the honeymoon, huh? <laughs> friends can have it for free because friends help Puko. Congratulations, now you know why this was a prerequisite to what we're doing now. 
Because we helped Puko out earlier, helped him out, uh, which was prerequisited by all those doctor quests, that is why we are able to do this. So, um, Aditi could eat it, and she would be big enough in order to catch him when he falls, whereas Dobby Dobby would be big enough to survive the fall if we give it to him. We may choose who we wish to give it to. Who is the happier option, you may ask? Those tree roots are so gorgeous. And yeah, the happier option is indeed a Dee Dee. Friends got enlarging seaweed and echidna jaw gristle. Oh ho, oh, ho, ho, it smells so good. I, I just tasted a little bit. Oh ho, oh, ho, 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 ho. What happened? I suddenly massive knob on. Of course, now Big Me should be able to catch Dobby, 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 Dobby. Have courage and jump to a DD. I'm going to jump now. C catch me properly, a DD. Dobby, Dobby, save me because a DD caught him. Phew! Now, Dad upon Lalapa, leave Dobby, Dobby alone. Now I massive knob on. And I dancing the chicken, but my bigness let me save my Dobby Dobby, so I'm very happy! We will stay in love forever! Uh, well, the difference in size is quite different. Uh, if you check the affinity chart, whichever Nopon that you chose to give the seaweed to will now have a new portrait. A DD's portrait used to be more like this one, which didn't take up the whole thing. Now she is, like, bloated beyond the confines of her portraits. Um, so yeah. Uh, Dobby Dobby has a unique portrait. If you choose to give it to him, you'll see it on screen right now, should you choose to do that. I personally like Dobby Dobby's text a lot, though, but you will ultimately end up with a happier affinity should you do it the way that I did. And just because you guys want it, let's talk to Aditi. Listen to Dobby Dobby. He may have thanks to tell friends. Well, let's do that. Aditi has grown really big, but now we can be together. Thank you, friends. Your kindness moves me. Well, your wifey pawn is now also your bed. <laughs> Didi was amazing. Thank you for everything, Ricky. I thought it best to try and jump on my own, but now I realize I needed my friend's help. Ricky realized that, too, when he jumped. No matter what you do, working together, best thing. Dobby Dobby learned good lesson. Going it alone is dangerous. Being scaredy cat so pitiable. You end up having to get others to do everything for you. Dobby Dobby must promise to keep that secret between him and Ricky. Even though Ryan is within earshot, no one must know about Ricky being big scaredy cat. As if nobody was aware. Now he can be with Aditi. That's so sweet. For completing that, we get no reward whatsoever. No money, no experience, no item. It would be a complete and total ripoff if we didn't get that. And if we didn't get Ricky's cowardice skill branch unlocked. Uh, I'm going to check the affinity chart one more time. Might be seen as a little redundant, though. But now you can see that after completing that, they will be a happy couple. And you also have provide stuff here. <laughs> kind of funny. So, Ricky's new skill tree. How about we take a look at that really quick? Because you can bet the hero pawn has some very interesting skills of his first three trees were any indication. Cowardice ups block rate by 2%. The skills are... Pretty Stars increases strength during the night time by 15%. This can be really helpful for some tough battles later on. Watch Out increases agility when HP is at half, 20% no less. Activates 100% of the time as well, so it's reliable. Amazing Stars reduces cooldown during the night by 15%. As you can guess, these skills make Ricky very good at fighting at nighttime. Bullseye improves accuracy of back attacks by 15%. Dun, dun. Not really sure I would call that the best. I guess if you're fighting uh, monsters and you're underleveled, maybe that might be good. And Bestest Stars increases experience awarded in battles during the night by 20%. If that last skill was any indication, Ricky just got a lot cooler. If Valak Mountain's prettiness wasn't enough to make you want to play at nighttime, this definitely will. <laughs> so. With that skill tree completed, are we done quite yet? Actually, no. But I think we're going to save the rest of it for next time. We now have fourth skill branches on every single party member, and some really, really cool skills on said branches. But um, next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're going to be going around Frontier Village a teeny bit more. There is one more chain of side quests I want to take care of. It's not nearly as long as this one. We'll be doing that, and then we'll be heading back to the Mechonis. See you guys then.
Hello? Thank you. 